Welcome to Awana Clubs Online, Awana at Home. I'm so glad you joined us this week. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been focused on who God is. We've been talking about God and who God is. And this week, we're going to kind of wrap up that unit and just kind of give a recap about things. And what we're sharing is coming from the Bible. And so when you look at that, when you see the things we're seeing, it's coming from the Bible. If you have your own Bible, you can open it up and kind of follow along. But we're talk what we're talking about is coming from the Bible. And so what we're going to talk about as we wrap up this unit is what's called the good news. And you can see right in the middle here, we have the Bible. It shows the Bible because the Bible is what we want to focus on. And that's where we see the truth. That's where God speaks to us is through the Bible. And that's at the heart of what we call the good news or the gospel. And so let's take a minute and, and share some of that. You see, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. So you see, the scriptures are important. It's how we learn about God and how we learn how we should live our lives. And so that's why we need to be focused on the scriptures. And so up here on the screen, you'll see the different scriptures that we're talking about, and I hope you'll follow along. But first, like I said, realize that the scripture is the, is the core. It's what we're talking about and the fact that Jesus died on the cross and he rose again was buried and that he rose again the third day as the scripture said he would. That's important. That's why that's in the middle. But to understand that, why he died on the cross and why he rose again, we have to understand the nature of God. And that's what we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks is, is who God is. We've learned that God is the creator. God created everything. He created the heavens and the earth and all that is within it. And he made man in his image. He made us in his image. And so we, saw, we see that God is creator. We also learned that God is holy. Revelation 4, 8b, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty who was and is and is to come. Now, when we talk about holy, we're not talking about the holes in your genes the holes in your old t-shirts. We're talking about without sin. We're talking perfect without sin. That's who God is. He's holy, okay? Um, and we also learned that God is love. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You see, we also studied that God is eternal, which means he, he has no beginning. He has no end. He is eternal. He doesn't, you know, have time. We don't know how old God is because God doesn't have an age because time is built upon when he created the heavens and the earth and how we look at, at days and, and months and weeks and time in general. And so God's the creator. God is holy. God is love. And God is also just. We learn that God is just. And so he's going to give us what we deserve. And so we see that the nature of God is that he's holy. He's without sin. But what about the nature of man? You see, that's, that's opposite of God. So what are we like? If we're made in the image of God, then we should be holy, like God is holy. Well, let's take a look. We're going to look at Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.23. But first, Romans 3.23. So look at the people on the screen. And we'll have a few more coming up. But who is holy? Who would be a sinner in this picture? I mean, surely the man with the Bible is without sin. I mean, he's following God, right? So he's without sin, right? Well, let's take a look at what Romans 3.23 says. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Do you know what that means? That means they're all sinners. The man with the Bible, the preacher, businesswoman, the kid playing a game, sports stars, families, everybody in your family, grandma and granddad, your grandparents were sinners. Everybody 
you can think of, everybody that you meet, everybody that you see, we're all sinners. And we see that God is just. So since we are sinners and we're not holy like God, what do we deserve? Well, Romans 6, 23 tells us that. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You see, God is the one who determines. He says, look, you're not holy like I am. You need to be holy like I am to have eternal life like he does. But we're not. So the wage, what we deserve is death. The eternal separation from God is what we deserve because God is just. But he offers us a free gift of eternal life through Christ Jesus, through Jesus. And so that's what God did for us. See, the nature of God is that he's holy and he's just and he's love. Nature of man is that he's sinful and he deserves to die because God is just. But God did something to help restore that fellowship. We're going to take a look at that. See, what did God do? He sent Jesus to die on the cross for us, like we saw in that core verse in the middle. That he, was, he, he died on the cross, he was buried, and that he rose again, all according to the scripture. And so God didn't wait until we were perfect, until we came to him and said, God, I got my sin thing taken care of. No. Romans 5.8 tells us that Jesus died on the cross while we were still sinners. Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to be perfect. He didn't wait. He knew that we were sinners. He knew we weren't perfect. And he knew the only way that we could become holy was if there was a perfect sacrifice for us. And since Jesus did not sin, Jesus was not a sinner, he could be that sacrifice for us. And that's why he did it, while we were still sinners. He died for us. In fact, he had dinner with the people who were about to crucify him, who were about to betray him and deny him just before this, and he showed his love in that. And while he was hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So even in this worst moment, he forgave. And that's what he wants to do for us today, is forgive us of our sins. You see, because God's nature is holy. He's a God of love. Man is sinful. We disobey God. But Jesus died on the cross while we're still disobedient. And he died for us. So what do we need to do? That's what God did for us. What do we need to do? We need to trust. We need to trust that the Bible is true. That what, Jesus tell, what God tells us in the Bible is true. We need to follow that. So... We have a little example here. You have a young man on a diving board in a swimming pool. Maybe you've encountered this, standing on the pool, side of the pool, and a parent is trying to get you to jump in, or another adult or an older youth is trying to get you to jump into the water to try to help build that courage. But here you got the father in the pool saying, jump, I'll catch you. But until he puts his trust in his father, he's not going to move. He's not going to experience anything. He needs that faith to trust in his father that what he says he's going to do, he's going to do. And Acts 16, 31 helps tell us that. It says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. We need to trust in what Jesus did. Just like this young man on the diving board, he begins to trust his father and he jumps into the pool right to his father and his father catches him. And his father does what he says he was going to do. And God does what he says he's going to do. According to the scriptures, Jesus died on the cross and he rose again from the dead. Because, see, God is holy and he wants to have that relationship with us. But man is sinful. Man is not holy. And the only way we can be holy in God's eyes is to be perfect. But we can't do that on our own. That's why Jesus died on the cross while we were still sinners to open that door so we can have that relationship back with God, a direct relationship with God. But what we have to do is to trust that his word is true and believe that Jesus died on the cross for us. And so that's my question for you. 
Do you believe that there's a God who created the heavens and the earth? And do you know that you've disobeyed that God, that you're a sinner? Do you believe Jesus died on the cross to take the punishment for your sin because the wages for sin, what we deserve is death, separation from God forever. But when Jesus died on the cross, he opened a way for us to follow, to, to have that relationship back with him and to have eternal life with him. But we need to trust. And so that's my question for you today, is do you trust and believe that God sent his son to die on the cross and take the punishment for your sin and that he rose again the third day. If you do, then you're gonna live with God forever. And that's a great thing. Because if we don't trust God, then we, just, we get the punishment that we deserve for our sin, which is death, which is separation from God forever, which would not be a pleasant thing. And so my prayer is that you believe in God and that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. If you have any questions, reach out to your parents right now. Reach, reach out to your pastor. You can contact me. Reach out to somebody if you have questions about Jesus. If you, if you already trust Jesus as your savior, I thank God for that. That's great. If you wanna do that right now, as I've spoken, you said, Lord, I've disobeyed God. I want to follow him. And right now you can begin to follow Jesus just by telling him, God, I believe in you. I know I've disobeyed you. And I know, I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross to take my punishment. And I want to stop living for myself, stop disobeying you and begin to, to obey you and begin to follow you. And if you truly believe that and you truly mean that, then you'll spend eternity with God. And that's awesome. And your life will be changed from this point forward and people will see that change. So I just wanna pray for you now. Father, just thank you for sending Jesus, your son, to, be the, to take the punishment for us, to open that door so that we can have fellowship with you. We can have that relationship with you like Adam and Eve once did, like you desire. And Father, yes, we're still gonna disobey you and, and do things that are wrong, but we know that if we come to you and ask for your forgiveness, that you will forgive us. Father, help us to live for you. And I pray if anybody watching this has any questions, they will reach out and ask somebody and come to know who you are and begin to follow you. And Father, I pray for those that right now are deciding, yes, I want to follow Jesus, that they'll do that right now and pray and ask your forgiveness and tell you that they believe and that they're gonna follow you. And then to tell somebody else, and Father, just thank you for all that you've done for us, for restoring that relationship, if only we'll believe. Thank you again. In Jesus' name, amen. So my prayer is that you know who Jesus is and that he died for you. And I hope you join us again next time at Awana Clubs Online. So until then, keep praying, keep reading your Bible, and keep drawing closer to him. Until next time, see ya.